I was going to say just the one quick thing, and I, I, this goes for my service personally. I feel like it, it goes for most people's services. Um, it was just great to give back. It's, it's an amazing mm-hmm. feeling. Um, you know, it's a plus with the education award and, and the stipends and things like that. Um, but it, it's really fulfilling to be able to give back to your community, depending on kind of what you're doing. But especially for me, you know, serving in an underserved uh, you know, community and population and uh, being able to you know, make a difference in, in students' lives was uh, really powerful. And, it, you know, I was going to say just the one quick thing, and I, I, this goes for my service personally, I feel like it, it goes for most people's services. Um, it was just great to give back. It's, it's an amazing mm-hmm. feeling. Um, you know, it's a plus with the education award and, and the stipends and things like that. Um, but it, it's really fulfilling to be able to give back to your community, depending on kind of what you're doing. But especially for me, you know, serving in an underserved, uh, you know, community and population and uh, being able to you know, make a difference in, in students' lives was uh, really powerful. And, it, you know. All right. We are back with another AmeriCorps Connections podcast. And this is this special series of the uh, 2024-2025 recruitment extravaganza. And we're coming to a close. My goal was to um, highlight 15 programs. And I think we're um, starting to head down uh, the, the downhill of that. And I'm super excited to be here with Max Berry from uh, Earn to Learn. Earn to Learn Next Steps program. We shortened it a little bit to ETL, Earn to Learn. Um, and I don't know anything about this program. So I'm excited to learn from from Bear, from Max and also learn about the opportunities and his service experience. And this is the AmeriCorps Connections podcast. And, um, you know, I'm Nikki Fiacco. I'm an AmeriCorps alum. And I use this platform to really... Uh, highlight AmeriCorps members who have spent a year, two or three or five uh, years in service to um, really tackle some of our community and our nation's biggest issues. Of course, we can't solve it during one service year, but, um, you know, the opportunity gives us, the, the service gives us an opportunity to learn about the issue, but then also learn about ourselves and become better le- le- leaders, better citizens, and better humans, as far as I'm concerned. I want to just also thank uh, Dan Menevier from Time or Money Productions. Sharon Tewksbury Bloom re- uh, reached out to me from, uh, she's the CEO of um, uh, Do Good, Be Good. I don't have my notes, I'm sorry, but uh, Do Good, Be Good. And she said, I want to support your program, the, the podcast. And so her and her all alumni team have been helping me on the back end. So the purpose of this podcast is to connect with alumni, find out like, what did you do as a, your service year? How did you find AmeriCorps? Because sometimes it's a little elusive. <laughs> like, where do you find the projects? Um, and then what are you doing now? And where's that through line from your service year? So we're doing um, the recruitment extravaganza for 24-25, really helping these programs find the next generation of AmeriCorps members. Yeah, like, how did you find out about AmeriCorps? And like, how did you fall into this chaos? <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly, yeah, I just kind of stumbled into it. Um, I had briefly heard of AmeriCorps uh, just in passing, or I think most people have heard of like the Peace Corps or Teach for America. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, once I was in college, I had a couple of friends who you know did Teach for America or the Peace Corps. Um, so I was somewhat familiar with it, but I didn't really right, fully understand what it was. That was kind of like the reach of my knowledge. Uh, and then I was looking for internships my senior year uh, at the University of Arizona uh, as a educational leadership major. Uh, and needless to mm. say, it was the mm. COVID years, so there weren't a lot of uh, opportunities and things like that uh, for internships for me, sadly. Uh, you know, everything was still online, including my classes, so uh, getting into a school and, and working with students wasn't really um, available to me until my senior year, um, and actually, I was just reading, uh, I forget if it was like a weekly or monthly newsletter uh, that one of our um, advisors at the College of Education would send out with like internship opportunities and uh, you know clubs or right like all that kind of fun information. They were always about 20 pages long uh, and still are as far as I'm aware. Um, and yeah, I was just scrolling through, really looking for internships and um, Earn to Learn's Next Steps program really caught my eye. Honestly, not because it was AmeriCorps because I didn't fully understand what that was quite yet. Uh, but because it was an opportunity to uh, get into schools uh, in the local area and uh, work with students. And uh, yeah, it really sparked my interest. And then, yeah, that's kind of just how I fell into this. <laughs> we're to grow so, and learn and we're there to, you know, help you with that. So what did you do during, so you, you 
decided to be part of this program. What was the process like to get into the program? And then what, uh, what kind of service did you do? Yeah, definitely. So I will say uh, my interview process was also a little confusing at first, uh, just not really knowing uh, what to expect. Uh, and it's still kind of the same way uh, with our interview process. Uh, there's basically two interviews. Uh, the first interview is with us, right, making sure, you know, you meet the minimum qualifications, that you're a good fit for the program. Uh, so I got to do that with uh, the program coordinators at the time. Uh, you know, they kind of told me a little bit more about what the program was about, although I, I'll be honest, they did a pretty good job telling me, like, what I would be doing in the service, um, which would be uh, helping high school students with uh, college access and college readiness. Oh, nice. Uh, so really, really cool and interesting. Uh, so I went through that process. Uh, they gave me the green light, uh, and then I moved on to uh, the second interview, uh, which was an interview between, um, a, well, at that time, a potential site uh, that ended up being the site that I was placed at, uh, which was Desert View High School in South Tucson. Um, and during that interview, I got to uh, meet the head counselor there, who was my site supervisor, um, who really, you know, I saw on the day-to-day, -day, gave me my tasks and, uh, you know, the certain things I was supposed to be doing in my service. Uh, I got to know her really well, um, and, you know, she also gave me the green light, so I ended up serving there. Um, and then uh, after that, we had our orientation, uh, which was awesome. I, you know, thought I knew what I was doing and what AmeriCorps was in the program that really uh, shined the light on things yeah. as far as, right, uh, especially those AmeriCorps rules uh, for, you know, those who are listening who are AmeriCorps alum. Uh, yes. AmeriCorps definitely likes their rules and regulations. Understandably so, but uh, there's definitely lots of them. Um, so yeah, that was kind of uh, that process. And then after orientation, I was uh, able to start at my site. Um, for this service, for me and, and for our uh, advisors now, I always kind of explain to them, uh, you're always learning. Uh, we can try and teach you as much as we can at, at orientation, but uh, there's only so much time uh, to teach you those things and everything yeah. like that. And um, especially when you're dealing with uh, college access, um, there's, you know, every student is so, so different um, with, you know, what they want to do, their, you know, financial situations, situations back at home, uh, you know, just, you know, do they want to go to college or university or trade school or do they want to go straight into the workforce? Um, so, you know, not maybe knowing exactly what to do every time you meet with a student, but uh, once you kind of figure it out and you problem solve, uh, you know, while you're doing it and you have uh, the program staff to help you out as well as staff at the school, um, you're able to, you know, use every interaction as a learning experience. Uh, and also just to double down on the prohibited activities, which is what you were alluding to before, it's really important, actually, like, we, we actually had a lot of fun. We create, we uh, printed out the prohibited activities in kind of like a old scroll sort of paper and we rolled it up and we gave it to each AmeriCorps member. And we're like, we want you to frame this and put it next to your, your um, workplace. Because I love that scroll idea, by the way, I might have to steal that. We have our orientation coming up in August. So I yeah, might it was have to steal that instead of just handing it out. I like the scroll. How did, do you get connected to the students? Was it a program or was it um, optional for students to come to, to you for college readiness? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, so I, when I would do my service, right, you know, most of it's directly on site, right, like 99% of it, um, besides right. like maybe trainings and things like that. But um, yeah, so I would go into my site. I was there, uh, depending on like my school schedule at the time, like three to four days a week. Uh, Hey, I want to let you know about an event Goodwill Northern New England is doing as part of their efforts to build a community of AmeriCorps alums everywhere. On July 18th at 5 p.m. Eastern, Vista alum Maya Williams shares the story of her service, their best writing tips, and the best tips for adjusting to life after service. During their service at Equality Maine, Maya developed programming for LGBTQ plus youth. She then became a published poet and Portland's seventh poet laureate. If you're ready to join a community of AmeriCorps alumni, then don't delay. Register for this free event today by clicking in the show notes. See you then. Um, and primarily, I would call students out. So I was there in the counselor's office. I had like a little work area in the back. So they probably uh, loved it. They're like, yay, Max is here. I don't have to stay yeah, right? it, it was like, oh, I don't have to talk to the counselors, right? You know, 
Uh, and that's kind of the whole point of our program too. We do the uh, near to peer model. Um, so all of our oh, advisors yes. are either current college students or recent college grads. Um, and we really try and keep that, uh, you know, near to peer uh, model just because, right, you know, students have plenty of parents, teachers, counselors, right? So it's quote unquote adults, uh, yeah. you know, breathing down their necks all the time. You need to do your FAFSA. You need to apply for college. You need to do this scholarship. Uh, and yeah, you know, you're kind of beating the dead horse there a little bit. Uh, they know, they hear it, you're not helping. Um, so, you know, having someone, especially that's like in college or just was in college, uh, so they can ask those questions, um, both, you know, that, uh, the actual That's questions cool. as far as like getting into college and, and, you know, scholarships, right. Those like academic questions and also personal questions as well. Um, mm -hmm. That's also a huge part because a lot of our students are, you know, low income first gen students. So they don't necessarily have mom or dad or an older brother or sister or cousin or anything like that to turn to and say, you know, Hey, what's this like? How do I get involved in clubs? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what dorm should I do? How do I do this? Uh, you know, what's a good class schedule? How do I pick classes? Um, I can't tell you how many times students asked me about like Greek life and things like that uh, once they found out I was in a fraternity for a little bit. Um, so, and, you know, obviously there's students, you have to keep everything PG. They always want to know about partying and stuff like that. Uh, tell them like, you know, go watch a college movie. You'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but, you know, they, they get really curious and they feel a lot more comfortable, you know, opening up to you and asking those questions. Um, so it's, you know, really nice to, you know, kind of be able to build that relationship. Um, but yeah, kind of getting back to your question. Um, so yes, I would call in students, um, you know, send them passes and things like that. Uh, and they'd come and sit down in the initial conversations when first meeting with students, right, are just kind of the, the generic like, hey, what are you, you know, wanting to do after high school? Do you have a plan? Uh, and you would get such a wide range of, of uh, students. Some would be like, yep, you know, I already know, like, I've done my FAFSA. I went, to, um, I did my U of A application. I got this and this scholarship. Uh, you know, I have all this figured out. This is what I want to major in. And you're like, awesome, cool. You know, I'm a resource if you need it, if you want to look into more scholarships or just have any questions, right? Even about uh, those questions of like clubs and dorms and, uh, yeah. you know, how do I do X, Y, and Z? Uh, so then at least they, they know you're um, a resource. Uh, but for most of the students, they kind of had some idea um, or maybe, you know, no idea at all. And, you know, I don't know if, you know, college is right for me. Uh, the biggest thing is I don't know if I can afford it or I don't think yeah. I can afford it, um, which totally understand that, right? Like college is expensive. Uh, that gets pounded into us all day, every day, whether it's from parents, the news, uh, whatever it might be, because it is true. It's, it, college is uh, sadly expensive and only getting more expensive. Um, yes. But, you know, that's where, you know, we step in as, as Next Step Advisors and uh, just kind of provide them those resources to show them like, hey, if, if you do X, Y, and Z, right, you do your FAFSA, you apply to these scholarships. Um, a lot of the universities in Arizona, um, U of A, I know specifically does really well with them, uh, merit-based scholarships, right? So if you automatically, you know, have like a 3.5 or higher or a 3.0 and higher, uh, you get this amount off of your tuition automatically, right? Um, earn to Earn also has a match-based saving scholarship program, so we tell them about that. Um, okay. Lots of other, you know, scholarship opportunities. So uh, we're kind of the facilitator of resources, so to speak. Um, so it's great to to kind of share that with them. Also share our own stories. Like for me personally, I didn't think I was going to go to college. I wasn't really planning on it. Uh, I didn't think I was college material. I wanted to uh, just enlist in the army and kind of go from there. And if I wanted to. Uh, you know, go to school and I could go on the GI Bill like both my grandpas did, um, which, right, like sharing resources like that. Maybe you don't know. There are a lot of students who wanted to go into the military and do that or, you know, hey, I, you know, like working with my hands, but I don't know what to do with that. Like I've always helped right. my dad work on cars. So it's like, cool, like let's look at the community colleges. Like there's, you know, the six month program or this nine month program that's, you know, only $2,000 that you can get certified in this. Um, and, you know, be almost guaranteed, right, to be uh, making X amount of money. Um, so really just, you know, being able to share all those resources, experiences, um, really, you know, helps open the eyes to a lot of students who uh, honestly can think, you know, after high school, I, I don't want to say hopeless, uh, but, you know, they, they don't necessarily have, have a, a, a vision and a mission, you know, yeah. or a goal for after high school. They're just, you know, yeah, I'll keep working in fast food or I'll keep doing this, which, right, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, you know, 
wanting to but have some can, sort of goal for after. Yeah, and it, it like it can just be so overwhelming. Like I remember, I remember being in high school and I took community college classes while I was in high school. And then I remember walking past the library my junior, maybe senior year, and a bunch of people were taking the SAT courses or uh, test. And my advisor had told me, you don't need to take the SAT because you're not going to go to a four year. You're just going to go to a community college and then you can transfer. Reflecting back, like, excuse my language, but shitty advisor, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, you're, you're, yeah uh, a counselor, advisor, teacher should yeah. never do that. But, and sadly, we even see that in some of the schools that we serve, yeah. right? you know, and even if it's just, you know, one teacher back in eighth grade or something like that, who's yeah. like, never going to go to college. I mean, that, that fits with the student uh, and they yeah. take that to heart and they're like, yeah, I, I can't do this. Like, if they don't think I can do it, then I must not be able to. And, and luckily I, I did go to community college and I got my associates and, and then later in life, I was able to go back to, um, and get my undergraduate degree and, and, and then serve in AmeriCorps, which was the really the, like getting my degree opened up the door and then serving in AmeriCorps, like flung them open. But, um, to your point of just like not knowing, um, I didn't know, you know, there was potential there, but it seems so overwhelming. And so one of the things that I think so cool is that y'all could put like hope in people and um, yeah, this is overwhelming, but like, let's figure out what you want to do. You like automotive Great. Did you know that you could go to community college and get certified in two years to, and get a job that's going to pay you anywhere between 30 and $50,000. And you're going to continue yeah. like that's say, okay. Try more than that, because that's a huge thing with the trade schools right now. And um, Is it? You know, we always do push, you know, college access and things like that. But, you know, Hey, if, if that's not, you know, the path you want to go on, go for right. it. But um, yeah, for like a lot of like HVAC, you know, welding, plumbing, electricians, like some of the starting salaries for those are, you know, 60, 70, $80,000. Like people who are doing their apprenticeship, you know, they're not yeah. even certified yet are making 25, 30 bucks an hour, which, well, I'll, you know, I'll the share money some really insight. talks, right. Especially for a lot of these students who, you know, uh, you know, yeah. they, they think making 20 bucks in and out is a lot, which, Hey, for fast food, it is, I get it. Uh, but you know, you just get one of these certifications, even while you're getting it, you can get paid. Exactly. So I'm, I'm in a leadership program here in Maryland and we have uh, an, an individual in our cohort that works for the Navy. And one of the things that they're really, really worried about is there's a huge decline in metal workers. And she's like, Boeing will sell me an airplane. That's fine. Like Boeing has no problem selling me a $2 billion airplane, but I don't have any mechanics to work on it because they're retiring and we don't have people that are coming back through to, to backfill these positions. So, wow. Okay. We could go on forever and ever about like trade <laughs> school and stuff. And I just Shortage in, in those positions right now, which is the biggest thing. I mean, trust me, we can always use doctors and lawyers and things like that, but there's no shortage of them, so to speak. Right. Um, you know, say what you want about healthcare. There's, there's definitely some shortages in certain places and things like that, but the big shortage, yeah, is those, you know, blue collar jobs that, yeah, the welding, plumbing, electricians, right? Yeah, we, we need someone to be able to, you know, fix those ACs and, you know, do the plumbing of houses with, you know, the booming population we have. So there's, there's always job opportunities there and they can make good money and it's not a whole lot of schooling. It's cheap there. It's definitely a great option. Yeah. All right. So that was a commercial ad for, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> trade schools and community colleges. Let's go back to AmeriCorps. Um, so you had this great opportunity, which seems so cool. And I've said this on basically every single episode that I've done for this series for recruitment. Like, I want to be in your position. Like, I would love to be uh, in the position where I can open the doors for so many people and give them an opportunity to think outside the box and give them information about things that they don't know about. So you did your service year. It was during the pandemic. Wah, wah, wah. but you got through it um what is there anything else that you want folks to know about your service here or do you want to move into kind of where you went from there and uh what you're recruiting for and looking for now sure i was gonna say just the one quick thing and i, I this goes for my service personally i feel like it it goes for most people's services um it was just great to give back it's it's an amazing mm -hmm. feeling 
Um, you know, it's a plus with the education award and, and the stipends and things like that. Um, but it, it's really fulfilling to be able to give back to your community, depending on kind of what you're doing. But especially for me, you know, serving in an underserved, uh, you know, community and population and uh, being able to you know, make a difference in, in students' lives was uh, really powerful. And, it, you know, yeah, definitely. And we get a lot of that with with our advisors as well. You know, they don't really know what they're getting into coming in, as most people do, uh, you know, with, with an AmeriCorps service or even a job or internship. Um, but yeah, we just have a really great impact on those advisors and so many of them want to come back and, uh, even some who don't come back, wish they could come back, right? A lot of them are graduating yeah. and going into different, uh, you know, sex of life. Some are going to law school or, you know, uh, med school, things like that. Uh, and they really wish they continue, could continue, but they can't. So, uh, the service definitely drives people in and, uh, yeah, just right. That feeling of, of just being able to give back and being like, man, I, I just want to go back and do that again. It, it really, you know, gives you that uh, fulfillment, so to speak. Totally. All right. So what are you recruiting for now? Like, uh, what does the application process look like? What's the timing? What are the benefits? Yeah, definitely. So uh, we are currently recruiting. So uh, if you are interested in our program, apply, apply. Uh, if you are in the state of Arizona, um, we do um, recruit across the entire state of Arizona. Uh, we have high school and actually middle school sites now. We're starting to expand into middle schools as well. Nice. Um, but we have sites uh, in Nogales slash Rio Rico. So all the way uh, down south in Arizona, uh, Tucson, uh, Yuma, Phoenix, and Flagstaff. And then a couple others that are sprinkled around in kind of like the suburbs of those cities. Um, but we're all over the state of Arizona. We're constantly recruiting advisors and we're really in the thick of it right now. I've uh, been doing interviews pretty much nonstop the last week or so. Uh, as far as what the application process looks like, uh, you can go to earntolearn.org. Uh, and there, I believe it's under like programs. You kind of have to click through a little bit uh, and you'll find the next steps program and you'll find uh, the application. Uh, there's also just lots of information on like a program description, everything like that, uh, that might be able to, you know, uh, answer any questions you might have that you can't ask me while watching this video. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll click on that link. Uh, there's an application link. Um, and then uh, I check it every day uh, to see if we get more applicants. I'll review uh, your profile, so to speak, that you created, you know, with a resume and everything like that. Um, nine out of 10 times, we're going to, you know, push you through to that first interview. It is an AmeriCorps program. You're, you know, here to serve and to learn. Um, you know, we don't have any crazy, crazy requirements. You do just, you know, the usual AmeriCorps um, requirements or you have to be a, a U.S. citizen, uh, 18 years or older. Um, and then, like I kind of said earlier, uh, we are looking for current college students or recent college grads uh, who would be near to peer uh, for high school age uh, students. So you do that application, uh, we'll send you a uh, uh, interview invite within like 24, 48 hours um, of you doing that. Um, and then you get to schedule an interview from there. Uh, you probably meet with me, uh, about a 50% chance. It's either me or uh, Amy, our other program coordinator. Um, and we do those interviews, just kind of run you through uh, some questions. Uh, and then we'll uh, shoot you a response. Uh, you know, if you are accepted into the program, we move forward with you. Uh, and then you do just have to wait till like July, August when those site interviews start happening. Uh, we do have to okay. wait for the, the schools to come back from uh, summer break. So it does kind of vary from site to site when those interviews might be. Um, but right in about a month or so. Uh, and then our orientation is uh, August 17th in Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, you get to go to that. They're really fun, or at least we try and make them as fun as we can uh, with lots of activities and things like that. Uh, and, you know, we give you the full rundown of what you'll be doing in your service and uh, how to do all of the things that we ask you to do. Um, and we, you know, provide uh, breakfast, lunch, uh, drinks and everything like that. You get your earn to learn swag and merch, right? Like those hoodies we were talking about, everything like that. Uh, I need to re-up on mine. My hoodies uh, looking a little worn down, so I might have to grab one myself. Uh, and then, yeah, once that orientation ends, you're able to start uh, your service on site, uh, kind of depending on when they want you to start. Some, you know, schools have some stuff going on, so they might ask you to start a little later, uh, but then you get to just jump right in. Um, as far as the benefits go, uh, there is the biweekly living stipend that most AmeriCorps programs have. Um, the breakdown of like the pricing and everything like that, I was gonna say, I don't know off the top of my head, but it is on our uh, website and on the application. Uh, we offer, um, as far as our slots go, uh, the 675, 450, and 300 hour slots. 
uh, right? AmeriCorps loves to do the, the hour slots with the stipends and everything like that. So that's what we offer. Uh, and the education award also goes along with those. So once you uh, complete your service, uh, you do receive an education award that can go towards, right, like right towards tuition. It can go towards uh, student loans, mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, it's really, really helpful. I use mine. I got some student loans I'm paying off. Uh, so I was actually able to cut uh, one of my loans in half. So, and I'm so close to paying it off now. <laughs> um, Love that. So yeah, and then you uh, let also... me, can I just ask you a quick question about the hours? Because so there's also 1200 to 1700, which is like full time for a year, but it sounds like yours are either quarter time or part time. So is this something that somebody could do if they were a student? Yes, exactly. And that's exactly nice. why we do those uh, hours times. Yeah. Uh, right. The vast majority of our advisors are current college students. Uh, okay. So, right. It is that part time service. We always do say, right, like school comes first, uh, you know, focus on your classes. You know, we don't want you to like, uh, yeah, I can, you know, just skip my 8 a.m. class and, and go to the site. Like, no, we don't want you to do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, we want you to pick a, an hour slot that's, you know, going to be, um, yeah, going to meet up with your, your school schedule and, and time you need to do homework and study and things like that. Um, so yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's why we do those and, and don't offer uh, the full time. Does it um, cross qualify as internship for class credits or there's uh, one yes. other? Yeah. That's so many so times cool. it does. Uh, honestly, sometimes it, it's not up to us. We, we will, you know, give sure. you the A-okay um, almost no matter what. Uh, it is just kind of up to the college or university and, you know, uh, the college within that university, right? And their uh, qualifications for that. Um, so actually when I, I served, I did that as well um, because I was doing more than 20 hours a week, I was actually able to get six credits for it, um, which needless to say made my senior year a lot easier uh, than uh, you know, it should have been. Um, but yeah, so you can get intern credits for it as well. Um, but uh, we'll basically give you the green light for that. Uh, usually a lot of times, you know, we need to meet with like an advisor or something like that. Right. You know, meet those, uh, you know, cr the criteria and everything like that for their program. Uh, but yeah, it works for us. That's so great. I I really love the, um, I've, I've spoken to a couple of folks that do the um, in, in college or in, yeah, in college service where it, it's an AmeriCorps program and it also quali qualifies for intern internship as credits. And I just, I, I just love the creativity of that and the versatility of what AmeriCorps could be. Um, Max, you've given us so much information and you've given viewers and listeners so many things to think about. Is there anything else that you want to add as we close out? And then we'll make sure that we have all the links um, to the, the um, application and everything and make it super easy for folks to find you. But any last sort of tidbits that you would like to add before we close out? Uh, well, first, I just want to say thank you for having me uh, on here. This was an amazing experience. Never been on a podcast before. So uh, thank yeah, you yeah. for, you know, having me on my first podcast. Um, but yeah, I was just overall, right, AmeriCorps is truly, truly amazing, um, right? Just being able to serve um, and give back to, you know, whatever community, whether it's a local state or, you know, the, the whole country, um, you know, being able to, you know, cast some side of time and, and serve and give back is, is just an amazing thing. And uh, yeah, for our program specifically, uh, you don't have to be, you know, in the realm of education or going to school for education. We, uh, you know, have members who come from all different walks of life, but uh, specifically, are you, if you are interested in, in education or just, you know, uh, bettering the future of, you know, Arizona's youth, I definitely say, uh, please, please apply, uh, especially if you're in the Tucson and Phoenix area. We got uh, lots of open spots uh, there. So, uh, yeah, please apply and uh, thank you again. Yeah, no, that was perfect. And I, I will just say also, if folks are not in the education realm, it sounds like even if they go through this service year and their their service is about helping youth find their way, I feel like somebody could actually find their way as well. And how cool is that for the the path to show itself to somebody that you're mentoring and then and then yourself at the same time? Like, Again, yeah, this definitely. is just you, another you learn as the students learn. It, it really is, um, you know, you don't realize it necessarily maybe while you're in the moment, but uh, yeah, then once, once you get to the end of the year and you get to kind of reflect uh, on everything you've accomplished and, you know, the, the lives you helped change, you kind of realize like, wow, man, this, this really made, you know, such an impact on me. 
This was great. Well, thank you so much, Max. Thank you for being part of the uh, AmeriCorps Connections podcast and our re recruitment extravaganza for 2425. Um, and we will be back with um, maybe, I think, a few more uh, recruitment, and then we'll be back to our regular scheduling programming. But I don't know. We're changing things up on the podcast as we go along. So thank you so much for listening. If you liked this, um, please subscribe to the channel because it actually really makes a difference. And um, I've been seeing some comments. So thank you so much for those folks that are commenting on, on this YouTube. And then also, um, yeah, share it and let me know how it's impacting you because, um, you know, this is a passion project not getting paid for this. This is my five to 11 and Saturdays and Sundays. So thank you all. And we'll be back with another uh, alumni on AmeriCorps Connections. Take care.